Hey guys, it's Mountain Walk, and today we're going to be talking about red deck wins. Yep, that's right. This is another red burn deck thing for free modern. It's pretty sweet. It's basically, you know, one of the very many variations on that uh, old Giba deck list that Paul Sly played, but it was made by was it Mons Johnson? Well, anyways, that's not that important. But uh, what we have is one of the many, many different variations of that sort of deck list. And I'll be going over why you should play it, why it's so sweet, um, and all sorts of other cool things. Lots of, lots of interesting, interesting things you can do. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get talking about Red Deck Wins 2020. All right, so this is basically the same as all those other sort of uh, red full of super compact mana curve, one drops, maybe some two drops uh, kind of decks. And uh, it's not, not not that much different here. We got a lot of the same cards, you know, Mog Fanatics and Grim Lava Mancers and, and Lightning Bolts, all sorts of cool stuff. This variation is taken from uh, the version that Shuhei Nakamura played in 2004 at uh, PT Columbus. He was the runner up and uh, it was a pretty sweet deck list. I liked it a lot. Uh, it was really good at, well, being sweet and being able to do all sorts of stuff. Uh, Red Deck Wins is basically the version uh, plays of, of, of like, this is a version of Sly, but it plays more mana denial, mana denial, denial stuff, like Wasteland and Rashad and Port, and and uh, land disruption spells like Stone Rain and Pillage and, and whatnot. Um, so it's really cool. I like it. I like uh, destroying lands. So think sort of kind of like Suicide Black in some respects, except instead of like discard, um, you have, you know, wastes and ports and, and uh, stone rains and stuff and burn spells. So so it's kind of like an aggro control thing, but it's closer to aggro. Unlike the, like if aggro control is a spectrum or whatever, it'd be a lot closer to aggro than control. The wastelands and stuff are just to buy you a turn or two to really just uh, do a bunch of damage, that kind of stuff. Um, and this is, is perhaps the most, uh, the Shuhei's deck, I should say, is the most up-to-date kind of version I think I was able to find. I mean, there's other stuff you can play, like Tangle Wire and stuff, but I mean, I don't really, th I mean, Tangle Wire wouldn't be bad, uh, but I'm definitely like a little hesitant to like ramp up the mana curve a bunch. You know, even though uh, Tenkawar is obviously very powerful, but you, I think you'd have to play like a little bit different stuff to really make the most out of Tenkawar. Maybe like uh, Ankh of Mishra and Black Vice and stuff like that. Um, hard to say, but obviously Tenkawar is certainly a good card. Um, but unfortunately uh, for Shuhei, he doesn't get to play all the sweet cards that we do, like uh, Red Elemental Blast and Crypt and uh, all that good stuff. Um, and of course, all the extra extra mana disruption is obviously going to be good against decks where, um, like combo decks, whatever, any, any deck that's non-basic heavy, we'd be able to just, you know, slam a bunch of damage into them and, and uh, you, you get the, the random, like, I wasteland you twice and you don't play magic kind of stuff, which you don't really get with uh, the, the classic sly list, and I don't think you really have to give up that much for it. So that's kind of nice. That's kind of nice. Being ha being able to have even more free wins is is certainly uh, pretty sweet, uh, especially for a deck that already you know has so many with just stupid stuff like Fire Blast, things like that. But uh, let's go ahead and look at the deck list. All right. So a lot of this isn't going to be too weird. We got all these fetches, mountains, and stuff like that. Those are going to be good with uh, our good friend uh, Grim Lava Mancer. He like he likes doing that kind of stuff. Um, again, all the stuff is pretty much standard in any red deck, Curse Scroll, Bolt, Incinerate, Fire Blast. Um, a couple of standout cards, obviously Pillage, just there to accentuate the LD, and of course it's very good against artifact decks, and is good against uh, Mass Core, which is certainly a pain. If someone's able to like untap with it, then basically all your creatures are dead and you don't get to do much. And it takes like a bunch of cards to kill it. So Pillage will kill it just straight up, um, or Incinerate plus other burn spells will, will take care of it too. Um, of course, and then we got, like I said, in the sideboard, all sorts of stuff. You know, uh, stuff like Anarchy is good. Um, you can also like sometimes play 
uh, flaring pain, flaring pain's maybe even a little better against, against stuff like Cop Red and things like that. Uh, but Anarchy is just better against stuff like um, if they're just playing a bunch of like, you know, stupid white enchantments and crap like that, like a bunch of warmth and all sorts of crap that'd be hard to hard to deal with. Um, so Flaring Pain's better. It's more mana efficient, but Anarchy can get you out of uh, situations um, like like with Solitary Confinement. I mean, there's all sorts of stupid crap uh, that it deals with. So it just kind of depends. And of course, it's four mana, which isn't you know, which is easy to uh, support when, when you're playing 24 lands. Um, Goblin Vandal, just another card that's it's good against the uh, artifact decks. Again, um, this will this will help with the mana denial plans. Card's pretty sweet, and it just beats down if you don't need to to destroy artifacts. Look at him; he's so pleased with himself, just breaking that thing, whatever that thing is. Um, and of course, Power Static Pillar. Uh, Pillar, of course, is good against combo decks. Yep, not much, not that weird there. Um, you can play all sorts of stuff like uh, Price of Progress 2 against like super heavy heavy decks with lots of non-basics, um, all sorts of things. And, oh, oh, and I should I should mention, of course, Seal of Fire, just uh, one of my favorite cards. It's so good. You can drop it on turn one. Um, you can still activate it at instant speed. Um, it's easier to double burn stuff with like say if you only have three mana with seal of fire curse scroll that kind of thing so that's always sweet uh, stuff like uh fire bolt is good because you have you know all the extra lands and stuff so late game you can flash it back pretty easy uh but yeah yeah so let, let's move on okay so the idea is blow up the lands swing with your dudes um and just get extra attack steps out of it um, at least one extra attack step, if not more. Like I said, you can get a lot of free wins by just double wasting or, or waste plus port, that kind of thing. Um, I'd say the main deck is mostly set in stone because so many of the red cards are so good. And there's not a ton of different options for like burn spells because you already are locked in. So, I mean, there's nothing better than Bolt. And then bef after that, you have Incinerate, which has the added benefit of nailing stuff like Spectral Links or river boa stuff like that um and then of course fire blast which i think is basically non-negotiable um so yeah then after that i mean well okay okay you have curse scroll but that's like that doesn't really function very well in the early game um but then after that i mean you have firebolt uh volcanic hammer uh price of progress which is more of like a sideboard card depending on your metagame uh seal of fire did i say seal of fire seal of fire firebolt because you can even play Shock, but I think there's very few situations where you'd ever really want to play Shock instead of something like Seal of Fire or Fire Bolt, which have actual upsides to them. Um, a Shock is just so anemic too that um, just a little, a little, a little bit worse than the other like little Shock clones, I guess. Or, or even, um, even something like uh, Lava Dart would be good. But then again, I mean, trying to support Lava Dart and Fire Blast might be kind of tough. Anyways, anyways, uh, let's talk about Waste and Port. Why would you play these? A, because these cards are super awesome. Some of the better cards in the format, very, very powerful. Um, if you, you know, if they don't run a ton of, like, non-basics or whatever, you can always obviously activate your port with your Wasteland, and then when they play a non-basic, you can waste it, and then, you know, activate your port with your basics or, or whatever. So that's always sweet. I mean, these cards are just really, really powerful. They give you a lot of free wins. They give you all sorts of extra game and that you attack on a different axis against uh, an, a different axis of interaction against combo decks, control decks, things like that. So it's really powerful. It's good against uh, getting your dudes through man lands. Obviously, land still is a deck that plays a lot of man lands. So there you go. Uh, so yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of good reasons. Uh, I mean, they're, the cards are just very good. I mean, sort of self-evident. Um, these can't, these aren't the kind of things they've printed modern, uh, so we're sort of lucky to be able to play these kinds of things. So, especially in this format, in pre-modern, um, there is obviously a very big cost of splashing a bunch of extra colors because it takes a lot of work to make your mana work, and that can be undone by Wasteland. So there's a real incentive to not run a billion colors because, A, you'll take a billion damage and already lose to, like, some of the, like, turn four, like, um, sly, stompy kind of style decks. But probably wondering, why am I playing Blistering Fire Cat? What the heck is Blistering Fire Cat? What is this thing? What's going on? Well, let's talk about that guy. 
Okay, so Blistering Fire Cat basically is played because A, it's just more damage. Um, being able to tap out for this guy on, say, like turn four, um, or turn four or turn five or something, and just being able to get that extra damage is really sweet, especially since you're playing extra lands. Uh, so that's that's pretty nice. That's, that's actually kind of really nice, because it's four mana, seven damage instead of like the three mana, six damage for Ball Lightning. And like I said, you're playing 24 lands, so the extra colorist isn't a big deal. Uh, and of course, this card's actually, maybe it's sort of second mode or not so secret second mode is, is Morph. So you can play it as a Morph, but when you play it as a Morph, it's colorless. So it's not affected by stuff like Chill. It's not affected by stuff like Blue Blast and all those kind of things. And, and unlike a lot of other cards, this thing sticks around. So you get to rack up even two or four more damage on this guy, like late game, like just, you know, Play your Blistering Fire Cat, swing with it twice, third time, unmorph it, and one-shot him. So that's pretty sweet. So being able to dodge things like, um, well, like all, obviously all the aforementioned hate cards, Cop Red, uh, uh, Sphere of Law, yeah, that one, all sorts of nasty stuff. So that's really, really good. Um, and then, of course, even stuff like Ensnaring Bridge, since it's like a 2-2 two -two is obviously smaller than a 7-1, so you'll pretty much always be able to attack with it through a bridge, which is kind of nice. So it has all sorts of little things you can do. Having two toughness instead of one. Um, I mean, all sorts of stuff. And this, this is a sweet looking card. Man, look at this. It's a fire cat. I don't know what the thing was with like Oteria having like fire cats. There's like three or four in um, an Odyssey block and then obviously Blistering Fire Cat and an Onslaught block. I mean, they're all based on Oteria, which is what I mean. Why, why are there so many fire cats there? That doesn't make a lot of sense. And like I said, it's a, it's a cat. It's, it's a kitty cat. This is a, this is a cat in Magic. There was a time in Magic when you would play a cat, and it was like, wow, that card is so cool. Instead of like, wow, that fucking thing again. So yeah, um, it's a kitty cat, and it looks really cool in foil too. So that's nice. Okay. Um, like I said, uh, there's so many different good red cards you can play, uh, and like even like like I said, uh, like you know, choosing between Flaring Pain and Anarchy is is a really good choice. Um, it's interesting, whereas like a lot of decks don't always get that kind of kind of um, options to really optimize, like what kind of kind of hate they have. Uh, so that's really nice. That's really nice. Um, and if, there's all sorts of different ways you can go about this strategy. You can play stuff like you know, more burning bridges sort of style with uh, um, ensnaring bridge. So this is good against stuff like reanimator or whatnot. I mean, obviously you can just play crypt and still go with your original plan of doing stuff. So that might be better. Maybe both. Who knows? Um, like I said, mentioned flaring pain about a hundred different times. Uh, and of course, uh, tangle wire, tangle wire, very nice. Tangle wire plus black vice is good because vice will just keep doing stuff. Uh, when it's tapped, it's not like it's, you know, 2000, or excuse me, 95 or 4, 90, early on when artifacts turned off when they were tapped, yes, that was a real thing. So even all their stuff like, mil, um, not Millstone, but uh, Howling Mine would be turned off. Some artifacts still have that clause, but anyways. Um, and there's other stuff too, like did you want to play like Fledging Dragon or Flame Tongue Kavu? Those were pretty sweet. Fledging Dragon itself was really good because uh, you can go over the top of like walls and crap like that. And uh, it was a big dude that didn't die to stuff like uh, Smother, which is pretty nice. Obviously, you could deal like a ton of damage late game. And obviously, it's not difficult to uh, enable enable Threshold in this deck. So by turn four, you can you can pretty much easily have um, uh, Threshold. So turn four or five, I'd say, depending on your hand, of course. But um, and then, of course, there's, there's Dwarven Blast Miner. This might be an option. Dwarven Blast Miner is sweet. This was a thing a lot of old control decks would side in Dwarven Blast Miner because uh, other control decks would side out their removal a lot of the time. And you'd just be able to go to work on their mana base, which is pretty sweet. So there's tons of different options, tons of different options. So you're like, yeah, you can have sort of like a pseudo transformational sideboard with um, Ensnaring Bridge or, or whatever. You can do all sorts of stuff. And of course, there's other color hate that may or may not be appropriate. Stuff like boil and flash fires. It might just be better to play like more stuff like pillage, because pillage is, doubles as artifact hate, and 
It's not like there's a ton of mono blue and mono white decks running around. But you never know what happens. It's, it's certainly a different option uh, that you can play. So, yeah, all sorts of things you can do. Um, obviously, the only the only card I really want to play that isn't very good would be something like uh, Ankh of Mishra. I mean, she just takes so much damage from it. I mean, that could be uh, kind of suicidal, you know, because uh, obviously you take five every time it's, you fetch, so that's certainly not good. Uh, but it is, is, it is certainly an option. Obviously, Ankh Sly and Vintage played Ankh. So you can play Ankh and Vice, but you can't really play... Uh, uh, oh, shoot. Uh, fetch Lands, of course. So that's kind of kind of wonky. Um, you'd have to change it up a little bit, but that would be something worth pursuing. That would be a pretty cool pretty cool thing. Plus, you get to play more, more beta cards, which who doesn't like that? Everyone likes beta cards, right? So, yeah, that's it. That's it. Pretty much a lot of the stuff that you learned about other red decks more or less applies to this sort of deck, except, you know, you're a little bit more disruptive, a little bit more um, thinking going on, a few more decisions, you know, do I waste, do I port, da-da-da-da-da. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Oh, I should have mentioned something like a Goblin Cadet would be really good, because, like I said, with all the LD, getting extra attack steps is really nice, and... Goblin Cadet's probably the next best um, one mana two drop for red to play. Obviously, it's not very good if they have any creatures. Um, then it just sits there doing nothing. But uh, anyways, yeah. So hopefully you guys are enjoying Magic and in some respect trying to have fun in some way. So uh, that's good. That's good. So hopefully we can keep doing that and try and keep our sanity. Um, but yeah, you can always play red decks. Those are always fun. So that's it for today, guys. So thanks for stopping by, and have a nice day.